Here we go. Your eyes are like weapons Your lips could teach lessons Don't use it so reckless Cause for you I'm helpless You gotta take caution Know that I'm all in The chance of me falling you Know that it's soft day But if you don't wanna stay Starting up a wildfire in my heart Hope it's what you want Not just what you do It's starting up a wildfire in my head Hope it's what you mean Not just what you do This love is so costly It's killing me softly Don't know what to call Thing that you start make it look easy the way that you lead me into the fire, babe. Are you coming with me? If you don't wanna stay, please stop moving this way. You're starting up a wildfire in my heart. What you want, not just what you do. You're starting up a wildfire in my head. Hope it's what you made, not just what you do. Yeah. Hope it's what you want, not just what you do. That was Cautious Clay with Wildfire right here on The Current. What inspired that song? Yeah, so that song was really kind of inspired by sort of putting yourself out there and being vulnerable in situations where, like, sometimes translation or, like, or I guess intention can get lost in in relationships. Um, And the idea that, like, good intention is not always enough from people's emotions or to, like, save people from feeling insecure or kind of spiraling out of control um similar to like a wildfire or like a brush fire so that was kind of the intention of the song was to sort of bring out that sort of emotion um and how it feels to sort of fall into something in in a way that's like you know truly um vulnerable i guess Mm -hmm. now you're from ohio have you are you a fan of cincinnati chili at all well, I know you Skyline know, like, the, Chili. Yes. But, uh, yeah, that's like my... Are, are you my, a fan uh, of them? I love Skyline Chili, yeah. I, I loved eating it when I was, like, I, it definitely holds a very nostalgic memory in my heart, so... So you're more of a Skyline versus Gold Star in the, in the, in the Cincinnati Chili debate? I would debate. say so, yes, because that was the first one that I knew, so, mm-hmm. uh, you know it sort of like hit me at a certain time. So I feel like that's, that's where I, my, uh, my allegiance lies. And you performed back in Minneapolis with Remy Wolf in 2019. Do you have a favorite Minnesota memory at all? Oh man. I, well, I loved playing that night. We also got to go to this place called modest brewing. Isn't that yeah. what the name of it is? Yeah, mm-hmm. I really that was super cool. We like, uh, I guess one of the people who started it was a, was a huge fan, and we he he let us kind of water wander around the the brewery, and it was really cool because like just like the whole plant was just super crazy, and there's a lot of these different things, and um, yeah, that was definitely a fond memory. Are are you a craft beer drinker and at all, or it was just cool? I would to say tour? so. I feel like 
I, I'm not like I'm not like pretentious about it. I definitely like. I feel like I have a lot of taste buds. Uh, maybe I'm somewhat of a super taster. Who knows? Mm-hmm. If, even if that's the right thing to say, but but yeah, I I certainly like what I like. I'm not much of an IPA it, person, though, to be honest. So, so if you so, create your own craft beer, what would it be? What flavors would the cautious clay be? <laughs> oh man, probably. I don't know, Pilsner, some sort of Pilsner or, or ale. I think one of okay. like it have to be Pilsner or an ale. And then it would sort of have like, I don't know, some hint of, of, uh, I don't know, something like fl- floral. I don't know. I'm not, oh. I'm not like picky, but I think like, I, I like this natural, a little bit of like a natural sweetness, not like really mm-hmm. sweet, but just like a nice natural kind of like summery spring kind of flavor to it i always like with a little bit of bite that's why i'm, I'm into like pilsner Pilsner's but nothing, nothing yeah. too hoppy yeah i'm not i can't get behind the the ipa like the, the super I, juicy i that's not for me so it, i'm i'm more of a like a stout uh sour guy depends yeah. on the day like a, a good summer day yeah. a nice sour is always good oh so, yeah uh, oh yeah You've worked with John Mayer. Was there any advice that he had given you or like, what's the best advice he's given you in the studio? Man, I feel like his, the thing that I've gained from John is the fact that he, I guess knowing who he is and his past and his history, um, sort of working with him in the studio and seeing his process was just really enlightening because I think Mm -hmm. I can sort of, like I kind of see where he's coming from and I can sort of see how talented he really is and just sort of how he like brings him, himself out in in the studio and like works in the studio. And I think for me, he didn't really have to say anything, but I feel like from working with him, I sort of felt this sort of synergy where I was like, wow, this guy is like adding so many interesting elements and, and, and can sort of like still inhabit this place of like being in the weeds with, with making music. And I think that's something I never want to lose in my career. And I think that like, obviously him being as large as he is of a figure, I sort of took away that, you know, how important that is for for me, I think to, to sort of maintain that no matter where my career goes. And when making music for you, what comes first? Is it the lyrics or is it the melody and like instrumentation? What inspires you? It's mostly the melody first. I think I'm a very melodic person. Um, so melody is, is often where I gravitate towards. And then lyrics, I feel like, sort of come second to that. Uh, but it really depends, honestly, because sometimes there's, like, a certain sound that I like, and I'll try to, like, make an entire idea off of one sound, and then it'll spiral into an entire song. Um, I have a song called French Riviera that I released probably a couple of years ago that, that sort of, uh, it started with just that one little loop sound, and then mm-hmm. I wrote a whole song around that loop so cold war was sampled by taylor swift and and for her song london boy if you could sample any song from any artist what song would it be oh man that's a tough one i mean it it depends it depends on what i'm trying to do but uh, there's probably too many good samples from like parliament or something like mm. that funkadelic I feel like they have a lot of really interesting sounds that would be awesome to sample. Or Ohio players. Actually, it would be Ohio players. That would be my answer. That's uh, a good shout one. Shout out Ohio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's a jam. That would, that, that would definitely be an... I could see you over that. that something that's... Come on, we got to work towards that. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's another iteration. <laughs> uh, would you rather make albums or EPs? I'd rather make albums. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty fun. Cause I think like once you make an album and, and it's, and it's, it's got a theme, it's got an intention. It's, it's pretty cool because it feels like it, it, it it's an experience that you can really dive into mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, some sort of like quick fleeting kind of like, oh, there's two or three songs, like, which I like. I mean, I like EPs, but I think albums are more interesting to me. So I feel like that was why making this album, Dead Pan Love, was like always a goal of mine because I'd only really done EPs before this. So mm-hmm. 
coming out June 25th. What can people expect from it? Or what's your favorite yeah, track think, off the album? So that's that's a tough one. I would say the one that feels like the most personal is has to be either Spinner or Box of Bones. Mm-hmm. Um a tie between those two but i think like sonically the album is very hot and cold and i sort of did that and very intentionally like i'd say tracks one through seven are very hot and fiery and like have this sort of energy to them and then the, the back half of the album is a little bit like cooler more like uh like with not withdrawn but like more like uh set back a little bit um that song was like wildfire and spinner and, and roots um and bump stock. So like songs like that, that are a little bit more like down tempo uh, compared to like the front half. So I was very like intentional with how I, I, I placed all the songs and how they kind of flowed together. And, and so, yeah, that was, that was a fun process. I mean, it, it lays out a perfect album is the, s- the sequencing of an album. It's how you oh, listen so to an important. album. If, this, so if the sequencing is not right, no, exactly. Um, you can't, you can't do that. You know, you want like a good album is like a playlist, you know, that's how I mm-hmm. see it. It's like, it takes you on a journey that's like really intentional. So do you like skits on albums or at all? Or are you just, yeah, there is, there's actually one 37 second skit on my album. It's actually breaks the album in half. So it's basically like the first seven songs and then there's a skit and then like, it sort of like starts the next half of the album. Um, so I do like skits. I think they're fun. I think they, if they if they're done right, they actually can really enhance the experience. I feel like. Well, let's take a look at your performance of Spinner right now. Yeah. So this next song is a song that's unreleased. It's on Dead Pin Love, and it's called Spinner. It's actually a song I wrote on piano, um, but we're performing it with guitar tonight and the rest of the band. And yeah, I'm excited about it. It has sort of a. a a little bit of a country vibe to it, which I didn't really intend for. It doesn't sound like that on the record, but uh, we just rehearsed this yesterday. And uh, so here we go. Whoa. I just want to spin the truth about the ones I care about All in the name of suffering, but I'll see this through There's a slow down when nobody's around You can hear it false best, but you really need the worst now When you're living for your dreams
Now, you've been inspired by you, your first musical instrument you picked up after watching Aladdin. Is is that correct? The flute? That's correct. Yeah. What character in Aladdin would you be? I don't know. I want to be like creative with it, but I feel like I would just be Aladdin. Like, I don't know. He seems like <laughs> a chill guy. I don't mm-hmm. know. Or or I'd probably be um the genie. The genie is kind of fun. I like the genie. And what was it about the sounds in there that inspired you so much to want to pick up a, a, the instrument, the flute? Or- I think it was the visual, honestly. Like the idea of like being a snake charmer just seemed like a really interesting thing to me. Um, and so, I don't know. I wasn't even. I think the in the actual scene, he wasn't really even playing a flute. I think it was like some sort of gourd instrument. So, I think it was just more of like the idea of playing and something like that seemed really appealing to me. And I didn't really know why. Um, Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think, I think it was, I think it sort of ended up being sort of happen chance. I I can't really say as to why I think I was just kind of like, I want to play the flute. My mom was like, cool. So yeah, Yeah. but there was no like grand reason. I was like, obviously like seven years old. So I just tried trying stuff out. And then what was the next instrument you learned after that? So when I was probably about 15 or 16, I learned the saxophone. Um, Mm -hmm. And flute and saxophone are very similar. It's sort of like Portuguese versus Spanish. But I feel like the flute is like more difficult, I would say, than the saxophone. So learning the flute first almost made it easier to go to the saxophone. And and so I picked up the saxophone pretty quickly um, because there there isn't as much of a threshold, I feel like, to get good at it, uh, in my opinion. Was it hard to yeah. sell real estate? Speaking of like sp- difficult yeah. times. Oh man, yeah. Honestly, I, I definitely had some some funny times with that. I I would just basically be like going from a, a you know management office to management office trying to sell ad space. So that was that was in New York City for like a year, and then before that, I was I was uh, leasing apartments. So mm-hmm. yeah. It was certainly a process. What was the moment you realized that you were like, I I need out? What was the final straw? Like, I'm going to pursue music full time. Well, I think when I started to realize that a lot of the people who I was like kind of starting to associate with were, were doing music full time. And I realized like, okay, there's a way, there could be a way for me to do this if I'm smart about it and can sort of like save money, which I did. And then, once I saved enough money, I was just like, you know what, I, I got to do this. And it was sort of also around the same time that I started getting asked to like do production projects. Like my first production mm-hmm. project was honestly like pretty wild. I was, I was asked to go to Korea for like a week and a half to, to make music for um, a few rap, like rappers over there. And so that was my first experience. That was before anything like cold war before blood type for any of that. And so, me having the ability to do that and be paid for it was like my sign. I think I was like, okay, this is something that I should take seriously. And like, it's a skill that I have. So I might as well just, you know, try to flesh that out. How long did you spend in Korea? A week and a half. A week. So it was a quick, it was a a quick in and out trip. Who did you work with? Yeah. This artist named E sends, uh, and then this guy named, uh, it was this band called Glenchek and this guy named uh, Shimya, and they were all part mm-hmm. of this this collective called Beasts and Natives Alike, uh, which is like a subsidiary of a subsidiary label of SM, which is mm-hmm. the the large label over there. So, yeah, it was cool. And like one of the people, this guy Keon, who's still a friend of mine, he's like the A and R head A and R over there, and he he found me on SoundCloud, and I used to make beats on SoundCloud, so that was sort of like the intro and and he just you know saw some of my flute demos and my beats and my random remixes and i think he was just drawn to it so have you still made production for anyone else lately or i'll put it this way who do you want to work with if you could make a whole album with just your production that's a good one honestly i'm i mean i would love to do something crazy for kendrick lamar but like that's just you know that's like the, the shot in the dark but Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like a, like a really 
incredibly musical rapper like Kendrick, I think would be amazing because I, I feel like I could certainly like navigate the jazz space, but then also like the heavy hip hop space, but the alternative space as well. So I feel like I, I have a pretty large, like, I feel like music is only as good as the music, you know, and I feel yeah. like I know a ton of music. So I feel like that would help, I don't know, inform maybe new soundscapes. But like I said, that's, it's a, uh, it's always tough because there's always somebody else, but who knows? Who knows? You, you, hey, your past may cross at some festival in the next couple of years and you kick it off and you're making a full EP together. Well, hopefully we'll see. Um, in yeah. the song Roots, you have a, a lyric about grabbing tacos and a red punch. What's your taco yeah. order and what makes the perfect taco? Mm, that's such an easy question for me. So a perfect taco has to be not too saucy. It can't be too much sauce. And I feel like a lot of like Tex-Mex, you know, whatever. I, I don't think I really even had a really good taco until I went to Austin, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. But because I, I mean, I don't know. I grew up in the Midwest. Like there's tacos, whatever. New York has tacos. You could find a decent taco. But I think if you just like run across a random place, like I felt like more often than not, you'd find something really good. Um, yeah. in Austin or obviously Los Angeles and the perfect taco for me has to have not too much sauce, um, really fresh onions, like a meat, like I'm, I'm down for like pulled pork or yeah. not pulled pork, but, um, what's it called? Barbacoa. It's like the barbacoa or chicken. Um, mm -hmm. but like, it's just really like juicy and I feel like it's gotta have the onions. It's gotta have the cilantro and then a little bit of lime. And, uh, yeah, that's cooking right there. I mean, the best tacos are just so simple in my opinion. Yeah. Um, are you a corn, corn yeah. tortilla guy or flour? Oh, flour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, speak, speaking of roots, let's hear roots with you performing it. Here's roots right now. <laughs> Adams up to comments, life is never promised. You could make me wanna lie and be dishonest. Mm -hmm. The simple things they mean much. Just thinking while I'll be in touch. I'm clocking out at eight. Let's get tacos in the red punch. Whoa. But you got your eyes down. You say you're gonna leave. Your eyes down You say you're gonna lose 